There's a couple baits in this box that I think you really need to take a little extra time picking the right rod, reel, and line, and we're gonna talk about it in this video. So let's get to it. I know everybody in the world loves a good topwater bite, right? And one of the most unique topwater baits I think I've ever seen came in this month's mystery tackle box. Check out this guy right here. It's called the motorboat. Now what this is, is sort of like a hybrid between a soft plastic and a buzz bait. All right, so you kind of got, you got the best of both worlds here. You got the shad shape of, shad shaped body of a soft plastic, and then you got the buzz bait blade on the tail right here. So what you can do is throw this guy out and you can reel it along the surface and you'll get that really cool burbling noise as you reel it back to the boat. It's a really unique profile that makes it a little different than a buzz bait and a little different than like a fluke style lure. So you get the best of both worlds. That's what makes it unique about the motorboat here. Let's talk about the rod and reel action here that I like to use when you're talking about the motorboat. Now, I like to use any kind of topwater bait. I'm going with braided line. 50 pound test braided line is what I like to use for this particular bait right here. And this is what I have. What I have right here is a 7.6. All right, this is a 7.6 heavy action rod. We say, Brian, why such a heavy action rod? Well, the top water, a lot of times we're throwing that, that guy around vegetation. There's really no, no reason for me to go with a wimpy stick when I'm talking about a top water bait. This guy has one single offset hook or EWG in it. So when I hook him, I need to bring him to the boat. I don't have time to worry about it. Does the fish have his mouth on it? This, uh, am I gonna skin hook him and pull the hooks out? I'm not worried about that. I wanna get the fish in the boat. So 50 pound test braid, this is a 7.6 heavy action, turn him around, get his butt in the boat type of rod. And I'm using a lose faster reel, an 801 gear ratio reel. Now the reason I'm using a fast reel is because a lot of times with a top water bait, it's a surface lure. So when the fish bites the bait, he's coming towards you. And so I need to be able to pick up that line to ensure that I get a good hook set in him. So that's very important when you guys are here fishing the motorboat. Now my connecting knot with my braided line for the motorboat, if you guys are familiar with the Palomar knot, that's basically what I'm gonna use, but it's just a little bit different than the Palomar knot. With the double Palomar, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tag in, we're gonna take the bunny ear in, and we're gonna run that through our line tie one more time. So now, instead of having two strands of line through our line tie, we're gonna have four strands of line you're gonna make that overhand knot with your loop, just like you would in a traditional Palomar. Everything else about this knot is the exact same as a traditional Palomar. The only thing you're changing is you're running the line back through one more time, so you have four strands of line. Absolute guarantee that you're not gonna break that line. That knot ain't going anywhere. Clip your tag in, and this is the perfect setup for the motorboat. Use a big rod, use heavy line, 50 pound test braid, use the fastest reel. This is a man's man's type of bait here. You want to bring him in the boat with it. So check it out. The motor boat from 13 fishing. Dude, this is a really cool bait. And I promise you, you can catch some really cool, exciting topwater baits on this guy right here. Now the second bait that we're going to talk about is this little mini recon from Guggen Baits. Now, you know me, if you watch any of my YouTube videos or my FLW tour vlogs or any of my tournament vlogs ever, you know, I'm super passionate about throwing a crankbait. This is a little medium diving crankbait. It's not a square bill, but not quite yet a deep diver. This guy gets about three to six foot deep, depending on how long your cast is. Taking him out of the box here, this is a great color. I really like this color. The chartreuse. As long as a crankbait's got chartreuse in it, you got the right color. Chartreuse with a brown back, has a little bit of dark on the backside. It's the perfect small profile for those springtime bass. A lot of times in the spring, the water's cold, fish are a little bit lethargic. They don't really want a big crankbait. I like big, bigger crankbaits during the post-spawn of the year when fish have already spawned and they're starting to feed back up again. Right now, fish are lethargic and they can't really digest really big, large meals at a time. Smaller crankbaits seem to work a little bit better for me. So try this mini recon. Let's look at the setup for cranking. Now, when we start getting into crankbaits, I can get really particular about what I like to use on my, my, especially a little shallow diving crankbait. You gotta be careful not to overpower a small bait like this with your equipment, your rod reel and your line. Let's talk about what I like to use. 
I'm always gonna use a little bit shorter and a little bit softer reel for crankbaits. This guy is a 6'8 medium action. All right, that medium action is a lot softer. Anything you've got in your arsenal that is a softer rod, what I mean by that, you see how this guy has a lot more tip in it when I pull the line? See that tip bends a lot more easily? All right, softer rod. And what I'm gonna use is a slower reel. This guy right here is a lose six, eight to one gear ratio reel. Like a slow gear ratio reel, crankbait's already pretty erratic as it's coming through the water. Using that slower action lets the bait get down to the desired depth. It, it actually will roll over structure better and you won't get hung in wood and rock quite as easily if you use a slower action reel. The other thing is when you're fighting a fish, those little treble hooks, you can see those are small treble hooks, is really, really easy for you to rip that hook out of the fish's mouth. So if you use the correct gear ratio reel, don't rush that fish to the boat. Be really easy with him with that softer action rod. All right, softer action rod, a little bit slower reel. All those things are gonna work for you to help you get a few more fish on the boat. So um, that's what I like to use, 10 pound test line, 10 or 12 pound test line. I don't like to use bigger line. Bigger line is gonna cause more resistance, which is gonna impact the action that you're gonna have on the bait. Eight, 10, 12 pound test. I almost never use more than 12 pound test when I'm throwing a crankbait. This guy right here is gonna catch some fish in the springtime for you. Now the next bait I got for you is a bait that everybody can relate to. Even though I'm not much of a jig fisherman, I've got my own little twist that I like to put on a jig that makes it fun to fish. This right here is called the juice. This is just a little jig that they put in the, the mystery tackle box. We're gonna go shopping and we're gonna find a good trailer for me. Now we've got some trailers in this month's mystery tackle box that you guys can use, but I'm gonna show you a little twist that I like to put. We'll call this the B-lat twist on fishing a jig. Now, this guy right here is just an Arky style jig. It's the perfect size, has the perfect size hook in it. The thing I like about an Arky style head is you can use this guy to flip with, you can use him to cast with, or you can use it to swim a jig with, and that's what I'm gonna talk a little bit about here. So my preferred way to fish a jig is called swimming a jig. Some of you guys may be familiar with it, some of you maybe not. Here's my rod reel set up for swimming a jig. I got a seven foot two Phantom Rig Series from Favorite. It's a medium heavy action with a fast tip. It's got some backbone to it to turn a fish around. I'm gonna use a loose reel this is gonna be a seven five to one gear ratio reel. It's got some speed to it so I can keep up with it, keep that bait high and swim it along the surface. I'm using 17 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon line and my connecting knot to my jig for this presentation is gonna be a traditional Palomar knot. If you don't know what the Palomar knot, again, check out the link in the description box. We'll link that knot there. Slow it down so you can see exactly how you're using it. This guy's a 5 16 ounce jig that we're using here. The juice jig, it's a Guggen, Guggen juice jig. Palomar knot, just a traditional Palomar knot works best. I don't suggest using the double Palomar knot on fluorocarbon line. It's just a little bit too abrasive on the line, too harsh on the line when you cinch it down. Tie that guy there, and then it's wetted a little bit. I always moisten that knot just to reduce the line burn there. And then cut your tag in, and that's your connecting knot for the juice. All right, now let's go shopping in the shop here and show you the kind of trailers I like to use when I'm using a jig to swim it. All right, so this particular technique that I'm talking about here is called swimming a jig. Basically, you're throwing your jig out. Instead of letting that guy hit the bottom, you're keeping it up top, pumping the rod tip, and keeping that bait up on the surface. You can almost visually see the jig come back to the boat. That's a super way to fish during the springtime of the year because fish are usually moving shallow and they're around structure, vegetation, sticks, lily pad stems, things like that. And keeping a bait, the fish are almost always feeding up because the water temperature is warming and they're, they're trying to absorb a lot of that sunshine by staying high in the water column. So let's put our baits high in the water column. It may be best that you use the motorboat or a swim jig instead of something like the crankbait, just depending on what the situation is. Now the trick to it is, 
When you're swimming a jig, you wanna use a trailer that helps you keep that jig higher in the water column. So let's look at a couple of my favorites here. So I've got a pretty good selection of trailers that I like to use when you're talking about swimming a jig. There's two predominantly that I like to use. Although you can use any style creature bait uh, or, or any kind of swim bait, there's two particular that I like to use. This one right here is called a diesel minnows. And there's also craws that I like to use too. The craws have a little bit more uh, water resistance to them and they do a really good job of keeping the bait up and above on top of the water surface when you're fishing a swim jig. So here's my jig here, right? 5 16 ounce juice jig. Now, as I mentioned, there's two presentations I like to do with this guy. One where I cast a jig out and I'm pumping the rod tip to keep that bait high in the water column. What I like to use for that is gonna be a cross style trailer. This one is the Z-Man Turbo Cross. And what I like to do, you can use any type of creature bait or any type of craw bait. You're gonna rig that guy up on your hook. And what this does, it just helps you keep that bait up above the surface. If you're fishing extremely shallow water, this is gonna be the guy for you. If you really need to keep that bait moving fast and keep it on top of the surface, the thing about this guy can represent shad. The thing about a jig is it's so, so versatile. It can represent a jig, a crawfish, it can represent a brim, so many different things. You see, I chose a white trailer this time, so obviously I'm gonna be trying to mimic a shad with this guy. Works great during the shad spawn, works great when fish are moving up to spawn. You can even if you're swimming that jig and you see something that you want to flip the jig on, you still can use it as a flipping jig or a casting jig as you're swimming it along the surface. So try this guy. This, you can use a jig in a bunch of different ways. This just so happens to be something, that, a presentation that you probably don't see in your body of water by just reeling it back to the boat, keeping it high in the water column, and drawing some of those aggressive strikes. Now, this is my crawl presentation to keep it higher in the water column. The next way I like to fish it, say perhaps if you're fishing some grass or aquatic vegetation or anything or brush that is a little deeper. Let's say it's in that two to four foot region. You can just throw that bait out, let it sink down to the desired depth and just slowly reel it back to the boat. That's also swimming a jig. Anytime you're important action on the bait, not actually letting it hit the bottom, that's swimming a jig. I like to use a swim bait for that better. It, it lets the bait get down to where you need it to be a little better. And that's a very effective way to do it as well. The streamlined body of the swim bait just tends to let the bait get down a little deeper. This is a four inch swim bait. You can use a three inch if you'd like. It just depends on the size of fish and how aggressive they are during the day when you're fishing, uh, swimming your jig. Pull that guy up and over the keeper. See, and that looks good. You notice I changed, went drastically different in my colors. The white worked really good. And you see now I've got a purple one for like a brim presentation. So if I had some coontail grass or if I had some hydrilla that was in two to four foot of water, take this guy out, cast it out, let it sink down to the desired depth and just slowly crank it back to the boat. That's swimming a jig. Promise you it's a guaranteed way to catch you some fish during the springtime of the year. Hey, so that's some of the baits that I got in this month's Mystery Tackle Box. There's a lot of other awesome baits in this month's box. Those are three of my favorites in a couple ways that I like to rig them and fish them during the springtime of the year. So make sure you go subscribe. You're gonna get a lot of baits that you can use. And you're gonna catch more fish because your tackle is gonna be on point.